Hello, I'm Professor Robert Lenz, a law librarian at the University of Colorado Law School in Boulder, Colorado. In this presentation, we'll be looking at various techniques to improve your online searching. We'll be looking at uh, how to form a natural language query, how to convert that to a terms and connectors query, how to use Boolean operators, and I want to introduce you also to structured searching and the value of structured searching. So the learning objectives for the presentation is at the end of it, you should be identify the goals of online research. You'll be able to understand the various search approaches to searching online. You should be able to identify the differences between keyword and structured searching. You should be able to write Boolean searches to narrow or broaden your search results according to what you need. You should be able to identify the advantages and disadvantages of using the various search approaches and when to use them. And then understand the value of database selection and how that can improve your online searching. So for this presentation, let's assume we have this particular legal problem. Your law firm represents a real estate developer, Jane Gebildet. Her company, High Country Dream Homes, has just purchased a large tract of land in Larimer County, Colorado. Her intention is to divide this large tract into 45 lots upon which will be built single family homes. A small creek runs across three of the planned lots, making them unsuitable for development. While the creek contains flowing water for much of the year, it does dry up during the late summer and fall months. Jane would like to fill in the portions of the creek that run across the property so she can develop those lots. She would like to know if this is legally permissible under federal law, and if it is, how she would proceed in doing it. We want to find out what law applies and what does it say. <clears throat> All right. So let's look at search goals. There really are two search goals fundamentally. The first goal is that we want to find all of the relevant documents for our particular problem. If our search is too narrow, then we will exclude documents from our search results that are relevant that may help us solve this problem. So that's one of the search goals. The second search goal is that we really only want to find only the relevant documents for our research problem. Uh, if our search is too broad, if, do we, if we pull in not only the relevant documents, but documents that aren't relevant, then we're going to be spending a lot of time sorting through irrelevant documents. We don't want to have that problem either. And in the information science literature, these two problems are considered precision and recall. So in our two goals, we were concerned with relevant documents, finding relevant documents and only relevant documents. So the very first question we have to ask ourselves is, what is a relevant document? And that is going to depend on you and the problem that you're researching, what it is that you are looking for. For this particular problem, a relevant document is likely to be a case or series of cases and probably also a statute and in this case, a federal statute. So we want to build a search that will retrieve from a, for us the key statute or statutes in the area and the cases interpreting those statutes. That's a relevant document. So what are the various search approaches? Well, there are fundamentally two different kinds of search approaches. One search approach is to use keywords uh, either with or without connectors. If we use them without the connectors, the, uh, the Boolean operators and the other connectors that are available, that would be considered natural language searching. If we do use the connectors, then that's a Boolean or terms and connector search. And with the, uh, in either situation, what we're doing is we are searching through a body of legal literature and creating our own index of documents. The other approach is a structured approach, which is to say, we use the existing structure of a finding aid or organizational aid to help us locate those relevant documents. This can be an index. It can be a table of contents. It can be a digest for cases. We'll look at digests in a later video. But structured approach means someone else has done all of the indexing for us. We're just taking advantage of that existing structure to find our documents. So let's look at natural language first. Uh, this is probably what we're most familiar with. This is also called plain language searching, although there is a little distinction between natural and plain language searching. But this is just like Google, right? This is 
coming up with a question or a phrase and just typing it into the search engine and looking at the search results. And so one of the questions that we need to determine is how does the search engine parse those search terms? How does it take this particular search terms and, and come up with the concepts to identify relevant documents? Uh, the advantage of it is that it's easy, right? There's no Boolean required. We don't need to know terms and connectors searching. We don't need to worry about how terms are related to one another. The disadvantage of it, though, is it may be a little less precise, right? Because we can't specify the relationship of one term to the other term. We are relying upon the search algorithm to do that for us. Uh, maybe there's a way we can overcome that with the way in which we phrase, put the terms into the search itself. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. When do you use natural language searching? Well, really you can use it at any time. Uh, the general advice is the terms and connector searching tends to be more precise. Uh, you have more control over your search results. Uh, but if you find the terms and connector searches are not working, or you just don't know the terms or the starting points, a natural language search is, is a good way to get started. And I think increasingly uh, it, it may be the starting point for our research. These search engines, Lexis Westlaw, are really pretty good and can come up with at least a good starting set of relevant documents. So for our particular problem here with Jane Gebildet, uh, a natural language search might simply look like this, right? Can Jane Gabel that fill in the creek that runs across her property that sh so she can build houses on them? That's a very straightforward uh, layperson's way, if you will, of, of asking uh, about the research. Can she do it? Can Jane actually fill in those, fill in the creek and build the properties? Yeah, I think on a moment or two reflection, realize there's some deficiencies with that search. First of all, uh, we wouldn't want to refer to Jane herself because remember, we're searching a collection of documents, of cases, of statutes. It's not likely they're actually going to refer to Jane within those, within those documents. So we want to create more of an abstract question uh, and really say something maybe like this. Does federal law permit a developer to fill in a creek on property to be built into a housing subdivision. This question is not perfect, certainly not perfect at all, but it's a little bit closer to the abstract ideas that we have a developer, we have a creek on a piece of property, she wants to convert this into, into a housing subdivision, and we want to find the federal law that's applicable to it. This is an approach, a, a better approach to finding that answer. We could even improve it, perhaps we can improve it, uh, and eliminate all the little words in between, right? All the connecting words and maybe express this as federal law, developer, fill, creek, property, housing, subdivision. Maybe that's all we need for natural language search, uh, that the system would anyway only parse those search terms and not all the, the A's, the twos, the ins, etc. Anyway, all right, terms and connector searching now. Let's look at terms and connector searching. We have a basic search from the natural language searching, and really what we've done is we've identified the terms in that natural language searching. The advantage of the terms and connector search over the natural language search is now we get to determine what terms are being searched, in what order they're being searched, and what the relationship of the terms are to one another. In the natural language search, we simply put in the terms. In order to do terms and connector searching well, we really need to be good at two things, problem analysis and resource analysis. So for problem analysis, we need to understand what we're being asked to research, and we need to develop from that understanding descriptors, search terms, keywords, and also be able to identify legal and factual concepts. Is there a particular legal concept that we're looking for that we could express as a search term or the particularly particular facts within that search problem that we need to identify and use as search terms? As we develop that list of search terms, we need to think about related, narrower, and broader search terms. For any particular search term, 
is there another way to uh, an, uh, another way to express that? Is there another word that says the same thing? Is there a broader search term, for example, if we're dealing with a automobile accident and it, the accident itself deals with a car, maybe we need to look for not just cases dealing with cars, but cases dealing with automobiles or cases dealing with trucks or cases dealing with vehicles. Uh, and this is really where we may find value in secondary authority research when we get there is that we can find the alternative ways in which to, uh, alternative ways in which to find those search terms. The other thing we're going to want to consider under this analysis step is how will the documents appear in the database we're searching. We tend to think we're searching full text databases and all of the terms within that database are indexed and searchable. Uh, this is not always the case. If you search a bibliographic database like a law library or library catalog, that generally is going to have just titles subject descriptors, maybe some note fields. And so that search will have to be, the search terms will have to look a little bit different than if we're searching a full text database. Expanders, so there are the terms and the terms and connectors. The terms also have expanders. So search engines like Lexis and Westlaw uh, provide us these expanders to provide term flexibility. So you'll see, for example, an asterisk which stands for a universal character. This provides for alternate spellings for a term. Uh, for example, judgment, sometimes you see it spelled with a E following the G. Uh, you could put in the universal character to find it, uh, those alternative spellings. The other is a root expander. This allows you to take a, the root of a word and look for all the, all the different endings for that word. In my example on the slide, you see bank with an exclamation point. This will help us find terms for bank, banking, banker, bankruptcy. So we're developing that list of terms and we're looking at alternative terms, and narrower and broader terms. We might also think about using these expanders to help us find different versions of those terms. And then the connectors, the other star in the terms and connectors show. So the connectors allow us to combine phrases to express the legal concept or factual framework to locate the documents expressing those terms in the appropriate database. Essentially, the connectors allow us to specify a relationship between the terms as they appear in the document. The basic set of connectors are Boolean operators, and these are AND, OR, and NOT. And these really derive from mathematical, um, mathematical um, searching as these as databases were developed decades ago. So the basic set of connectors are called Boolean operators. And as we discuss each of these Boolean operators, we should ask ourselves, what is the impact of that operator on our search? Does it have the effect of broadening our search and helping us find more documents or narrowing our search and uh, eliminating the larger set of documents? So the first of these is an AND Boolean operator. We'd use it as term A and term B. And what that is directing uh, our search to do is retrieve documents in which term A and term B both appear within the document, anywhere within the document. Uh, if they both appear, then that document will show up in our search results. Another Boolean operator is the OR operator. And what this is directing the search system to do is to locate documents where term A or term B appear in the document. So if a document has either one of those terms, doesn't have to have both, just either one, and then that document will be retrieved. The third basic Boolean operator is the NOT operator. And what this is saying is that uh, documents that contain term B, in this case term A, not term B, will not be retrieved. So the document contains term B, uh, term A and not term B, it will be retrieved. If it contains term B, it will not be retrieved. So what's the impact on our searches? AND tends to narrow our search results. We tend to get fewer search results when we use AND because a document has to contain both terms. OR tends to broaden our search results because the document can contain either search term. There are more likely documents to contain those. And NOT tends to narrow our search results uh, because if it has that term B, then the document is eliminated.
So using those Boolean operators, how could we modify our search uh, to take advantage of the Boolean operators to improve our search results? Well, here's one approach, right? We could say federal and law instead of federal law and developer or owner and fill and creek or stream or canal or waterway and development or build and housing or subdivision and the idea being here for federal law we want that really as an idea we want to find federal law discussing this particular problem so we need a document that contains both those terms and if we want to find documents that deal with developers, maybe a different way to express the idea of developer is owner. So a document that contains developer or owner will work for us as well. And what do we want to know about him, him or her filling, filling the creek? There may be other terms we could use to express that idea, but we're good enough for that for now. And what is the creek? But we may want to broaden that slightly, right? And find documents that not just discuss creeks, but maybe streams or canals or waterways, all different ways to express the idea of a creek. And a development, we want to introduce that idea. It's really a housing subdivision, perhaps. We want to develop or build a housing subdivision. So this is an approach using the Boolean operators that may or may not improve our actual search. While the three basic Boolean operators can help us improve the precision of our search, we may find that that is not precise enough. Fortunately, database providers have provided us with additional connectors that allow for a greater level of precision. These are the P, the S, and the N. Uh, and again, as we look at these, we should ask ourselves, what effect does each of these have upon our search results? Does using them broaden our search results and we get more search results or does it narrow our results and we get fewer results the p stands for paragraph and when we use it to connect two terms what we're asking the system to do is to give us documents in which term a appears in the same paragraph as term b the s stands for sentence and there we're asking the system to return documents in which term a appears in the same sentence as term b and the N is, stands for a number, a number that we supply to the search engine. And in the example I have on the screen, term A slash 25 term B, we're asking for documents in which term A appears within 25 terms uh, of term B, within 25 words of term B. And we can specify that number from one up to 255, although that, that upper number may vary by the system. Uh, again, this increases better precision. We can be better expressing ideas, legal concepts, and that facts should be closer to one another to describe what's going on. The other nuance here is that we have an option for how those terms appear within a paragraph or a sentence. Uh, and that's with either the slash P or the plus P. If we use a slash P or a slash S or a slash number, uh, we're saying that the, the two terms can appear in any order within the paragraph or the sentence. So in the first example, term A slash P term B, what we're saying is that term A can appear before term B in that paragraph and be retrieved in our search results, or term B can appear before term A uh, in that paragraph and be retrieved in our search results. In the second example for sentence, I use term A plus S term B. What the plus says is it specifies the order in which the terms have to appear within the sentence. So in this case, since term A precedes term B uh, and we're connecting with the plus S, we're saying the sentence must have term A before term B to be retrieved as a relevant document. So if the sentence has term B before term A, then that's not going to be considered a relevant document and will be excluded from research results. Again, it gives us much more precision over our, over our search results. The last thing I want to point out on this slide is we can also uh, use quote marks for phrase searching. If we put an object in quote marks or phrase in quote marks, uh, the system should return documents in which that phrase when the quote marks appears. Now let me throw out to you that uh, 
database providers sometimes tweak with the way in which terms and connector searching and Boolean searching works. They try to enhance it. They try to assume some things about the terms and the connectors to help us come up with more relevant search results. Don't worry about that for now. As you get to use different search engines, you should look at the documentation, the online help on what it's actually doing to have a better sense for what your search results are likely to be. So using our newfound knowledge of these additional connectors, we could modify our search as follows on the screen, where it's federal plus one of law and developer or owner slash p fill slash s creek or stream or canal or waterway and development slash s housing and subdivision so here what we're doing is we want to find a document or federal law exists essentially as a phrase and we want to find a document where owner occurs within the same paragraph as fill and fill within the same paragraph is same sentence rather as creek or stream so that raises a question that looking at that search, we're not really sure how the search engine is going to interpret uh, the search phrases, right? So in what order will the system read the search terms? And is it read left to right or is it by type of connector? In other words, for that particular search that's underlined, fill slash s, creek or stream, etc., is it within parens fill slash s creek in other words we look for documents where the word fill is in the same sentence as creek or stream or river or canal or is it that fill has to occur within the same sentence as creek or stream or river or canal and waterway how do we know what to do well the systems have uh, ways in which they def default ways in which they will read that kind of search phrase and here are the order of operators from lexis and from westlaw uh, where uh, it, the, the terms together get interpreted uh, as such where or is uh, read first so when it reads through a search phrase if it sees two terms or together those will be read before uh, a search term and other connectors such as slash s slash n slash p so those will get processed second after the ors and then after those will get processed the uh, and and finally the but not or the and not operators we could also force uh, processing using parentheses so we could do is simply put in within and i didn't do it here simply put in that we wanted um, in this case federal plus one law and paren developer or owner close paren slash p slash uh, fill slash s and then paren creek or stream or waterway but that's a good idea to do that because it helps us understand what it is that's being processed but the system will use a default a default interpretation so this search will find documents that contain the term creeks or streams or rivers or waterway and then development or housing or building and then landowner in the same paragraph as fill property the same paragraph as development etc all with federal law because it's the federal law is appended as an and all have to appear within a document but there are other ways to improve searching, and that really is a database selection. What we want to do here is we want to choose a database that contains the smallest amount of appropriate coverage. We don't want to have in the database any documents that are we know are not going to be relevant to our search results. Um, so for example, if we're looking for 10th Circuit cases, while we could find 10th Circuit cases in a federal cases database, uh, that we would be better off searching in just a database of 10th Circuit cases because running that search within the all federal cases database is going to retrieve cases from the other circuits and from the US Supreme Court, where really what we want is just the 10th Circuit and yes, probably also the US Supreme Court. So we'll just run the search in that narrow database to improve our search results so as you create these searches think about also the composition of the documents in the database again we've already talked about full text and bibliographic information 
but also if it's too broad for cases or for statutes or for other secondary material, choose the smallest database that will work for us. So what we want to do to improve our search is something like this. We really don't want to put in there federal plus one law or even something like 10th circuit as part of the search phrase. What we really want to do is delete that from our search phrase and run our search as you see it in line one on the screen in the 10th circuit court of appeals database. That's really the most precise way to get back relevant uh, 10th circuit cases for our, for our search. So there really are two approaches to searching online databases. One is a content-driven approach and the other is a source-driven approach. By content-driven, what we mean is that we are less concerned with the database that we're searching for the information in and more concerned about running the search and then sorting through the result resulting document set to find the relevant document. So we search first and we analyze next, right? We create our search terms or search phrases, whether as a terms and connector search or natural language search. And then we just put into the search box and see what we get back and we sort through the results. Uh, to do this successfully, we really need to utilize post search filters uh, to narrow down that large set of documents. So clearly, if we're thinking about what is a relevant document, some number of those are not going to be relevant documents in the sense that if we identify a case as a relevant document, we'll be getting secondary authority if we do a broad general search across all of Westlaw or Lexis. But it has the advantage of eliminating the need to identify a database up front. The other approach is called a source-driven approach. This is really an analyze first, search next approach. What we do is after we do the problem analysis and come up with the phrase, we do ask ourselves, what kind of a document is going to answer this problem for me? Is it a case? Is it a statute? Do I need to look in secondary authority? And then using that information, we identify the database in which to run the search. Uh, and then we enter the keywords and we, we get back our search results. The advantage of this approach, this source-driven approach, is it takes advantage of the database structure. So what do we mean by taking advantage of the database structure? Basically what we're saying is to take advantage of the fields that are that compose each of these databases. So a database is composed of records. Every document uh, in a document database would be a record. This would mean every case within a case law database is a record. And all records are composed of fields. A field is the component parts of the record itself. It's the discrete bits of information that are identifiably labeled in the database. So every document is composed of one or more fields. To help you understand this, think of a address database or contacts database we use on our phones and other places. Every individual in the database would be a record, um, but with each, within each of those records are multiple fields, a field for first name or last name, address, phone number, email address, et cetera. That's, how, that's the distinction between the records and the fields. This works is also true for legal information databases. For example, statutes. There are fields within uh, statutes databases. Here's what they are for Westlaw. There is a prelim section which uh, is the top part of the document where you see the, the title information, the part and the chapter information. There's a field for citation abbreviated with CI, that's the USC, or in this case, the USCA citation. A caption field, which is the title of the section, if you will. The text is the text of the statute. AN is the annotations, is the case annotations, though they're none listed on here. CR is the credits section, this would be the, the source note or the statutory history. Case law databases also have fields. Uh, in Westlaw, again, there, here's the example. The citation would be the, the, the reporter citation. In this case, it looks to be one from the Supreme Court reporter. The party name is a field, the docket number, synopsis, the attorney, the judge. Uh, of course, the opinion itself is a field. And then in Westlaw, they have headnotes and topics and digest entries, and those are all fields. 
and even uh, journals, the all journal databases have fields as well. So those records for a journal article has a field for the text or the title, the author. You can search by a particular kind of uh, journal name or a publication uh, year. You can even search by statute and case name. At any rate, all of these are extremely useful because when we create our search, we can uh, enter in that information into the field itself. And it's not hard to do. All we need to know is what the fields are in the document. And typically, you can get that information from the information bubble that's appended to, uh, added to the display of the database name. So here on this slide, you see an example of the US Court of Appeals cases database to the uh, right of the um, uh, brief description is a little I. This is the information bubble. And if you click on that, you get this information that tells us the coverage of it begins with 1891. But then you also see, uh, among other information, you see an option for searching and for fields. And this would give us those fields that we saw for the other cases database, the, the citation, the docket number, et cetera, et cetera. Right, very, very useful. So what we can do is we can combine the terms and connectors phrases with the database fields, and we can come up with some very powerful and very precise and efficient searching. So for example, uh, if we wanted to find all the judicial opinions written by Justice Ide concerning searches and seizures, we could use the JU field for a judge and put in Justice Ide's name and combine that with a topic field. This is a Westlaw. Westlaw uh, subject, essentially subject or topic identifier we'll discuss later. And that has a topic number for searches and seizures for 349. We can come create that search and this is gonna retrieve all of the cases in which Justice Ide was judged dealing with searches and seizures, right? Very, very, very precise. Uh, let's assume we wanted to look for photographs, uh, use of photographs to identify suspects. We could use the syllabus field, that's why, and then enter our search terms uh, in the parentheses, photo and lineup identity. What this would do is it would just run those search terms within the syllabus field itself, not all the other fields, not at the title of the case, just within that field itself. And the idea being is we will ret retrieve cases that are more likely about what we're, the problem we're trying to solve than if it, those terms appeared anywhere uh, within, the, uh, within the case. And the last example is a way you can search just the text of a statute. You just wanna know if your search terms, in this case, intentional affliction of emotional distress, are in the statute itself. You wanna find that statute talking about that as opposed to case annotations that may mention those terms as part of a, that statute, another statute that might not be relevant, we could just run that search within the text field of a statute document. So that wraps up our discussion of uh, keyword searching documents where you yourself are creating your own index, whether it's through natural language or terms and connectors searching, ways we can improve upon that through database selection and also using fields. The other basic approach is something called structured searching. And this is where somebody has already created a relevant index of documents for us. So this would be like searching an index for a pointer back to a place in the text that talks about that search term that we looked for. or looking at a table of contents or even the digest. Just now we talked about the topic for searches and seizure that was out of the digest. Editors at West determined that those cases belonged as searches and seizures cases were taking advantage of their work to uh, look for just that selection of cases. This can be a very powerful and actually somewhat of a, uh, of a confidence boosting way of finding cases or finding statutes or finding secondary materials. So think in terms of using that, whether it's an index, a table of contents, a digest, to help you boost your research. The advantage of it is that it takes advantage of the structure of the document in the database. The disadvantages of it is, you know, you're, you might be a little bit more limited in keyword specific search. Uh, it's very useful though, 
uh, for searching statutes and treatises and uh, and also where keyword searches just just aren't helpful so uh, good technique to use and, and as you as you move forward through your research so what we covered in this presentation is ways to improve online searching we talked about term selection and term placement as in, in regards to one term to the other we talked about Boolean operators and other kinds of connectors to help you express legal or factual concepts within your searches. We talked about database selection and using appropriately sized database that include the relevant documents but, but not extraneous documents. We talked about databases and field searching and ways in which you can combine your terms and connector searching within fields themselves to come up with a more precise set of uh, documents. And then finally, we talked about structured searching, digests, tables of contents, etc., as a way to get into relevant documents within a collection of, within a collection of documents or within a particular uh, resource itself. And with that summary, we're now done with this presentation. If you have any questions about Boolean searching uh, or terms and connectors searching, natural language searching, let me know. My contact information is here on the slide. Thank you.